Let's talk about the thin blue line. Morale in law enforcement has hit an all-time low. They feel alone, they feel neglected. They do it because, listen, Trump nailed it when he talked about the silent majority, right? We're all sitting here right now, silent. The left does an unbelievable job of tooting their own horn, rallying their people, towing the party line. The court of public opinion, like I said, now controls the court of law. The war on law enforcement isn't just a physical one though, it's a legal one. We are seeing attack after attack on law enforcement because we've lost respect in this country. We have lost respect for adults, we've lost respect for our elders, we have lost respect for rules and law and the Constitution. We think, thanks to the left, that if we don't like a law, we just get rid of it, or we ignore it, or we say the hell with it, we can do better without it. How do we get to this point? And let me tell you something, at law enforcement today, we put up an article two weeks ago about a proposal that would make any assault on law enforcement a federal crime. <laughs> Let me explain to you what a big problem we have though. Within two hours of putting up that article, our traffic on Facebook plummeted 95%. Facebook throttled our reach because of that article for three days. They send one hell of a message about our country and about where they stand on the thin blue line, right? So in Connecticut, they tried to pass legislation in the middle of the night. Now there's a ruling that was made by the Supreme Court, and I'm gonna break this down real simple. The ruling says, let's say, let's say you're an officer and you have to make a decision, a life or death decision to take the life of someone who is coming at you. Maybe someone points a gun at you and you have no choice but to take the life of that person who pointed the gun at you. Well, the Supreme Court ruling said, if all of the information at the time, you made the best decision that you could have possibly made, and you had to take the life of that suspect, you're okay. It's fine. You were justified. Well, what the state of Connecticut tried to do in the middle of the night was pass legislation that said, well, if information comes out later on that says that that was actually a black painted BB gun, and it wasn't a gun, and your life wasn't threatened, and you killed him, you could be held criminally responsible for that. I mean, are you kidding me right now? We're now asking our law enforcement officers to become seers of the future? It is a full-blown attack. The attack on law enforcement, ladies and gentlemen, isn't just buckets of water. It is our lawmakers pandering for votes from the left from people who probably shouldn't even be in this country to begin with because they don't want to lose their seat. That is what's happening and that is what's costing the life of our officers. And now you have red flag legislation being proposed that's going to lead to more dead cops. And I understand that this is a controversial subject on both sides. But frankly, I don't really give a damn. We're gonna talk about it anyway. Because here's the problem. I have a lot of friends who are in law enforcement, who are combat veterans, who have post-traumatic stress. Because guess what? You don't go do a couple tours overseas, have to kill a bunch of people, have to lose your friends, and not feel that in some way, shape, or form. You don't watch your brothers and sisters in law enforcement get attacked, save little kids, or lose two-year-olds in pool drownings and not hold on to that in some way, shape, or form in the form of post-traumatic stress. And you're gonna tell me that a simple report can now be filed that in, especially in liberal states like Connecticut, they could come in and say, we're gonna take your guns because you're mentally unstable. What happened to our constitutional rights? What happened to at least having legitimate conversations based on passing legislation focused on keeping people safe that is logical and reasonable and still protects our rights, we're not doing that anymore. We are passing knee-jerk legislation that makes people feel good and will do nothing to save lives. That's what happened in Connecticut after the Sandy Hook shootings. We passed legislation in the middle of the night to ban AR-15s made after a certain date that is not going to save a single life. We also passed legislation that puts a limit on magazines of 10 rounds. Okay, cool, but there's no limit on the number of magazines I can carry. And for anyone in here who's a halfway decent shooter, you can swap out a magazine in about 1.7 seconds, right? So what have we done? Nothing. 
We have accomplished nothing. They passed it so fast that the state police union had to step up and say, hey, uh, you forgot that we all carry 15 round magazines and so now you just made all of our weapons illegal and they had to go back to the drawing board. It shows you how our constitution was created in a way, our legislative system was created in a way that was supposed to prevent this. It was supposed to be a slow rolling process so that we weren't passing legislation based on emotion. Being forced to enforce legislation now that is a direct violation of their oath. Sanctuary cities. You are now preventing law enforcement officers from cooperating with federal officers and with federal agencies. Why? Because some Democrat decided that he was probably going to get more votes by making your city a sanctuary city? You show me one American life that is going to be made better by sanctuary cities. You can't do it. Instead, we're pumping taxpayer money into sanctuary cities. We have left-leaning judges, full-blown liberal judges, who are preventing the Trump administration from drying up federal funds to states that are blatantly violating the Constitution. And we as society tend to get angry with law enforcement for this, right? I, I feel your pain on it. You get the knock on the door, we're here to take your guns. We are now passing legislation that is creating a divide between the very people that silently stand up for and fight for law enforcement and law enforcement officers who are now put in a position where they have to decide between, am I going to stand up for the Constitution and the oath that I took? Am I going to enforce laws that are arguably unconstitutional? We just haven't declared that they're unconstitutional yet because they haven't made it to the Supreme Court and been challenged yet. Or do I throw away the ability to provide for my family and to keep my community safe? But we're getting mad at cops for that. We're getting mad at them for the divide that we have between federal and local and state law enforcement. It's all part of the bigger picture here. And if you're not seeing that, you gotta wake up. We are creating a divide between those of us who love those who serve and protect and those who serve and protect and putting them in a really unfair position.